first up on today's videos is anchor transitions. Whoa! <laughs> okay, uh, first off, we're gonna be starting off with Senator Scowcroft. Let's hear from our Senator Scowcroft. <laughs> hey, Kansas. Are you sick of doors and tornadoes? Well, if so, I have good news for you. It's election year. Not for president, for the other stuff. There's this guy named Matt, and he's running for governor. As governor, he'll get rid of doors and tornadoes because we know you hate them, Kansas. Windmills. You know you want more windmills? Vote Matt Scowcroft for more windmills. He is fluent in many languages, including French. Como allez-vous? Vote Matt Scowcroft as your Kansas State Governor for Justice this 2018 election in November. That's a while away, but I know you turn 18 at some point in your life. Yeah. Here's your, uh, here's your coffee, sir. Is that decaf? He doesn't do I, decaf. I, I you didn't give him- What am I, fourth grader? <laughs> Get out of here! He doesn't do decaf. You should have known this by now. So unprofessional. So there's a lot of reasons why people don't report. Um, a lot of times you hear people ask, like, why didn't you come forward sooner? Um, but the truth is there's a lot of reasons. People are really afraid of not being believed. Um, and our culture is one that tends to do a lot of victim blaming and sometimes question whether or not victims are telling the truth. Um, when statistically, about 95 to 98% of sexual assault reports are founded, which means true. Um, so that means that the number of uh, victims that lie is so insignificant, it's like 2 to 5%. Um, but fear of not being believed, um, embarrassment or shame, um, a lot of times people might feel like they put themselves in a situation where they were unsafe and so then they blame themselves and we always like to remind everyone that sexual assault is never the victim's fault um, and that for example someone might say well I was drunk with someone that I didn't really know very well um, you know then it was my fault and we always say the natural consequence for drinking is that maybe you're really hungover and if you're underage maybe you get an MIP or you get in trouble with your parents um, the natural consequence is not to be a victim of sexual assault. And then sometimes people just don't even know the um, definition of sexual assault or they don't understand that what happened to them might be considered some kind of assault. When we think of sexual assault, we think of rape, but we don't think of all of the things that include sexual violence. Sexual violence is sexual harassment, it's stalking, it's dating violence, it's sexual assault. Um, it's all of these different things. Um, so MOXA stands for the Metropolitan Organization to Counter Sexual Assault. And my job title is Advocacy and Outreach Specialist. Um, but I specifically uh, work with Title IX a lot. So anytime that anyone is sexually assaulted um, on a high school or college campus or by someone who goes to school with them, then I would be their advocate. So what happens after an assault depends a lot on what the victim wants to do and what their needs are. And let's say they decide to go to the hospital right away because they want to get one of those SANE exams. The term for it that a lot of people use is rape kit, um, but it's we call it a SANE. It's the sexual assault nurse examiner that comes in and does the exam. Um, then MOXA is immediately called and dispatched to the hospital. So someone wouldn't even have to come here. And then um, depending on what the person is comfortable with, we might stay with them. And then they leave with MOXA resources and they get to decide whether or not they want someone to follow up with them. And another thing that people should know is if you do get a SANE done, 
that does not mean that you are legally in any way obligated to report to the police. So you can get, a, you know, the sexual assault nurse examination that you can get that done and it can be as an anonymous kit. That way the evidence is collected and it's there. That way if someday you do change your mind and you do decide to go to the police, that that's an option for you. If someone wanted to make a police report, they could also call the crisis line or the police could and a MOXA advocate could meet them at the police station um, to kind of just be there for moral support and advocacy while they make that report. Um, and then uh, a survivor might come to MOXA if they like have counseling. Um, that's when they might actually be in our building. Our counseling is completely free. And then we also have a 24-hour crisis line. Um, the number for the Kansas line is 913 Six four two zero two three three, and then we do walk-ins too. So if someone wanted to walk into our office, we would provide them services um, as well, and just like meet with them. As far as the legal process, you know the the benefits to reporting are: if you report it to the police, then um, you know they can investigate it, and if it's um, then submitted to the prosecutor's office, then maybe that person could be convicted of a crime. So I think the good thing about reporting is that you know you're not so alone, and you do um, hopefully receive some type of like outpouring of support. I think another good thing about reporting is that it, um, I think it's a part of social change. Um, a big part of the issues that come with um, working with victims of sexual assault is understanding that um, a lot of the systems are broken and need a lot of fixing. Um, but, you know, reporting means that you might be able to be a person who's a part of cultural change. Like if you stood up and you said like this isn't okay and I want to report this, um, then hopefully that means that maybe someone else feels like safe reporting later on. But it's really nuanced and it's really complicated. So we always like to make sure that people just feel comfortable in whatever decision they want to make. Because a lot of times it's not necessarily that maybe someone calls the crisis line and asks me first. It might be that someone like comes and asks you first, you know, or like any anyone at your school if you're friends. Um, and so the things that we always say is that the first thing to say if you find out that someone you know is sexually assaulted, um, you tell them, I'm so sorry, it's not your fault, and I believe you. Um, and a really big reason why sometimes people don't go get help is because maybe the very first person they told had a really negative reaction. Whether that was that they blamed them or they kind of questioned them in maybe an aggressive way, then that could mean that person never feels supported and maybe doesn't ever like come forward and get the help that they need. It's it's good um, to believe people, and um, you know it's the thing that will make the culture change. Is not doing so much victim blaming. It's part of like prevention, and it's also part of helping people who are victims right now. All right, now it's time for the teacher awards. Hey, it's Luca. On behalf of myself and BVN Broadcast, I'd like to thank all teachers and faculty members for making this year a great one.